As you glide, bird, relaxed by the comfort and luxury of your Lufthansa flight, suddenly ships appear beneath your plane. And more ships from every part of the world. For this is phosphorus that separates the tip of Asia. Here, too, is the fabulous city of Istanbul, where you can see more than 400 mosques. Some are tiny, but many are large, like this giant called the Magnificent. You can see colorful bathing pools for relaxation and find new homes. Fan-shaped outdoor theaters, and the imposing Hilton Hotel with its sparkling green pool and skillful landscaping, and modern living at many levels for the Turks of today. Your Lufthansa plane floats gently out of the sky towards a great new airfield with straight, accurate runways that stretch for thousands of feet. Gracefully, the ship approaches with her wheels extended, coming in lower and lower for a perfect three-point landing, so smooth because of the world's most skillful pilots. Precisely on time, you disembark at Turkey's finest airport station, where an attractive Lufthansa hostess makes your welcome warm and pleasant. Eye-filling Turkish hotels, like the Divan, make you feel right at home. On their balconies, you can sit for long hours with breathtaking views of the Bosphorus, where the ever-changing scene is made exciting by swarms of ships coming and going in this most beautiful of all seascapes. On the hill above, the Hilton Hotel stands impressively against the skyline, honeycombed with balconies from where its guests gaze out over the rose trees to the blue waters of the Bosphorus. Inside full-length glass, lovely girls in traditional dress serve you Turkish coffee or finest tea. You should start your visit at Taksim Square. Here stands Kemal Ataturk, George Washington of Turkey, who made his people free. Taksim Square is really a circle in the center of the city. The square is to our right, leading to the western and more modern Istanbul. To the left begins the fabulous main street called Independence, where exciting life vibrates 24 hours of the day. We must eat at Pandeli's, located in the spice market, where we can enjoy sweet, tender lamb chops, or a Turkish specialty, doner kebab, a vertical cylinder of beef broiled with charcoal. The meat is sliced from the well-done surface into a cutout scoop and served in generous portions, so tender and so finely sliced that everyone can enjoy its delicious flavor if they can hold on to it. No, those are not tiny frankfurter hors d'oeuvres. They are sweets. These and almond cakes and so many others make your mouth water with goodness. We must be sure to visit famous Robert College started by American missionaries more than a hundred years ago. And the Istanbul University in the heart of the Latin Quarter, whose teaching ranks high in educational standards everywhere. We must see St. Sophia, known as the world's greatest Christian edifice and built by Justinian who ransacked the whole Roman world for its treasures. So many treasures are here like these Christian mosaics from 1320, considered the world's best and just recently uncovered. 
perhaps most of all, the Blue Mosque, which exemplifies the great contribution of the Turks to architecture and its delightful gardens. The Times Square of Istanbul is the Galata Bridge where teeming international masses rub shoulders every hour of the day and night. In five minutes, for five cents, you can ferry to Asia, where successful Turks build modern homes in which to relax and surround them with colorful gardens of flowers and of palm trees. No city in the world has more exciting nightlife than this, where the mystery of the East meet the excitement of the West. Here, in perfectly designed outdoor theaters, we may see the astounding folk ballet of the new African Republic of Ghana, fresh from Paris. Or, in the most seductive of nightclubs, we will be sure to see the belly dance, a demonstration of muscular skill for which the Turks are world famous. Ankara was the home of Ataturk, father of the Turks. He lies buried with great honor in an impelling mausoleum of native stone which took nine years to build. He made this city, built ages ago by King Midas, a city of tomorrow, with many acres in the center as a youth park, with unusual falls of water for all to relax, and where ageless children may ride fancy miniature trains. The countryside in Turkey is amazing. Great fields of wildflowers aflame with color. The government is building oases where tourists may rest in lovely surroundings and be refreshed. They are also building a brand new type of highway motel where meals are served out of doors. These are for foreign tourists and for very attractive Turkish people. In the ancient city of Eskashir, another fine Hilton hotel is nearing completion to offer the very best in tourist accommodation. Eskashir has most of the world's deposits of Mirsham, and its men have developed great skill in its carving. Holding the stone with their stocking feet, they cut it with saws into sizes just right for carving into gifts for tourists. Mirsham is moist and fairly soft when first mined, but in sunlight, it becomes hard and dry like ivory. These men produce brooches and earrings and jewel cases and strange Turkish pipes carved with the heads of sultans and cigarette boxes so delicate yet sold for so little after weeks of artistic work. Bursa was the capital of the Ottoman Empire before Istanbul and like most great cities of the world, the center of religious worship stands out. So does the green tomb of Mehmet I, so fascinating with its eight sides covered with the finest Kataya tile. Inside, the Sultan's jaunty turban looks upon very fine calligraphy and the tomb of his son. Typical of Turkish culture is the honeycombed arch over doorways which here decorates the mosque of Mehmet I, where the minaret, like everywhere else, represents a cypress tree, and the imam calls all to worship, even little children with brilliant eyes and serious gestures. He tells you that you must remove your shoes before entering the sacred interior. This is in reverence to God and to protect the handmade rugs worth thousands of dollars on the floor. Some carry their shoes inside and place them in the niches while they go to prayer. 
Muslim worship prevents waist problems when you bend at the middle with your knees straight and makes the body and the spirit humble when you touch your head to the floor. The calligraphy here is fine enough to incite the imagination of connoisseurs. It is the picture writing with Arabic symbols. In the center of the mosque stands a freshwater fountain that refreshes all who drink, even visitors. And to the rear is a side niche covered with rugs, too, with walls lined with finest tile, where color and design intertwine into eye-filling effects. The chandeliers are so graceful and delicate, you will want to bring them home. And the lace-like dome far above is a masterpiece of loveliness. Bursa produces most of Turkey's famous towels. Designs are simple, and the towels so very soft to tender skins. Ismir, the pearl of the Aegean, was the Smyrna of biblical times. Here Homer, who wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey, was born. Here today, you find hand-painted shoe boxes whose brass caps cover the dozens of ingredients with which your shoes are made to look like new. Tea and coffee are served everywhere by boys on typical Turkish brass trays. Turkish tobacco is smoked by Turks through glass water pipes called Narjila, giving them a much more effective filter than any cigarette. Tea is always taken in this shaped glass and with only a lump or two of sugar, that's all. In the center of Izmir stands one of Turkey's loveliest water fountains. And a very tiny mosque like a gem in a golden city. In every region of Turkey, men perform traditional dances to the mysterious music out of the past, like these at the Black Sea. A kamencha, or Turkish fiddle, and their own voices help to provide the sound to which they dance so vigorously. and so much more you can enjoy when you fly with the comfort and luxury by Lufthansa to see the fabulous mystery of modern Turkey. <laughs>